Hi friends, Pastor Doug Batchelor here. We want to welcome you to our Friday evening Bible question of the week. And our question today, was Jesus created? Will really be part of a series of questions we'll do over the next few weeks related to the subject of the Trinity. I know a lot of folks are much exercised over this. And we have a free book we're going to make available. If you want more information, I'm going to summarize as much as I can in eight minutes or so. And the book is called Exploring the Trinity, One God or Three. Go to the link at the bottom of the screen and you'll find out how you can get a free copy of that. Now, when we talk about the Trinity, I confess we're venturing on holy ground because the Bible says that as the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. And God is past finding out. And who can understand the Almighty? And so there are certain mysteries that we need to just know that we can't understand about explaining where God came from. But those things that are revealed belong unto us and our children. And I think the Bible does reveal very plainly that Jesus is eternal God, that he has been there always. Now, some read the verses where it talks about uh, Jesus is the only begotten Son, and they think, well, that means there was a time in the remote recesses of eternity when Jesus was brought forth, that God the Father created him somehow. And uh, I think there's plenty of scripture that tells you that Jesus has always been around, that he was not created. Let's look at what the Bible says. Starting with John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, talking about Jesus. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Now, the very fact it says he was, it's telling you that he's self-existent. He was in the beginning with God. Wherever the beginning is, he was there, as far back as you can go. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So to say that there was a time when Jesus did not exist, and yet he came into existence, would say that the Father made him, and... Um, the Bible says everything made was made by him. So he didn't make himself. So he must have always existed along with the Father. Now, some are going to parse and argue with the words. They say, well, Jesus was not made. He was begotten. And he came out of the Father. And they try to make a, an argument with semantics. But the fact is that if there was a time when Christ Jesus did not exist, and then through some act of the Father, he was brought forth, he was created. That's all you can say. You can't you know, change the words and try to say, well, begotten is different than being created. If he's brought forth by the Father, if he goes from being non-being to being by an act of the Father, he's created. And so that would mean that he's a creature and he's not the creator. That's a very important point. Um, now, you read here that uh, the Bible tells us in Exodus 3.14, uh, when God revealed himself to Moses, he said, I am that I am. That's the self-existent one. It didn't need any other to bring him into existence. And you can read that Jesus, especially in the Gospel of John, he calls himself with the I am terms all the time. You read in John 8, 58, Christ said, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And look at some of the other I am's here in John. Jesus says, I am the bread. I am the water, I am the way, the truth, the life, I am the door, I am the good shepherd, I am the vine, I am the resurrection. And the Jews understood what Christ said when he said, I am, before Abraham was, I am. They took up stones to kill him for blasphemy because he was claiming to be eternal God, just like the Father, that self-existent title. You read in Psalm 90, verse 1 and 2, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. That means as far as you can go in one direction, as far as you can go in another direction, more eternal than space itself, Christ has always existed. In Revelation, he calls himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That, by the way, is Revelation twenty-two thirteen. You read in Micah 5, 2, 8, prophecy about the coming Messiah. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, even from everlasting. His goings forth are from everlasting. Now, one of the, for me, I, this is, I think, a slam dunk truth. 
The idea that Jesus was created means that at some point a person believes that uh, God the Father, perhaps God the Father with the Spirit, but these people also don't believe the Spirit is God, did not exist, which would mean that at some point way back that God the Father existed all by himself and there was no other intelligent being. Now, the Bible tells us that the supreme definition of God is God is love. By its very nature, love must be expressed in order to be love. So for you to say that there was a time when God existed and Jesus did not exist, God could not be love unless it was expressed. God, the Father, Son, and Spirit, something we'll talk about another uh, question, um, has always existed. And that's why God is love. There's always been this perfect love between the members, the persons of the Trinity. Now, then there'll be people who look at Proverbs 8. Let me read this to you. Proverbs 8, and I'm going to read verse 22 to 25. They believe this is a, uh, a prophecy speaking about Jesus. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his ways. Before his works of old, I had been established from everlasting, from beginning, before the earth was ever an earth. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. They're saying, see, he was from everlasting, but it says that he was brought forth. They say this is about Jesus. Keep reading. When there were no fountains abounding with waters, I'm in Proverbs chapter um, 8, verse 25, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. Why he had not made the earth of the fields of the primal dust of the world. It's not saying that Jesus was brought forth before the world was created. This song is not a proverb. It's in the book of Proverbs, but it's one of the songs of Solomon. It starts with verse 8 has nothing to do with Jesus being brought forth. It is a, a metaphor for wisdom, the whole thing. Let's just look at some of the examples in here. Uh, Proverbs 8, verse 1, Does wisdom cry out and understand? Lift up her voice. She takes her stand on the top of the hill. The whole thing is talking about wisdom and the importance of wisdom. And you just go to some of the following verses. Verse 12, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. I find out knowledge and discretion. Go to verse 14. Counsel is mine. Sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. This is just a soliloquy. It's just a, a song of Solomon dealing with wisdom and the importance of wisdom. Wisdom was brought forth in the very beginning. It's not talking about Jesus. And so that, that's one of the arguments that I've heard before. But um, really to say that Jesus was begotten or um, meaning born. Begotten doesn't mean that. Begotten simply means that um, when Christ was incarnate, the only time God was begotten is in the incarnation in Jesus. And that was when God became a man. The Son of God laid aside his divinity and became a man. To say that there was a time when he didn't exist and then suddenly he did exist, he's a creature. Now here's the problem. A creature cannot die for the creation. The only one who can die for the creation is the creator. And Jesus is the creator. I'll close with this one. And there's many more verses. But you look in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Christ was saying he has perfect equality with God. And he didn't feel like that was taking something that didn't belong to him. Perfect equality with God. But made himself, going from that being a creator, equality with God position, made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. And so you take something away from the incredible condescension of Christ, that he went from being eternal God to becoming a human uh, that he might save us. And um, this, I think, subtracts from the importance of the gospel. So, friends, uh, if you have any more questions about this, I want to remind you we do have a very uh, important book, got a lot more scriptures. You can get a free copy. Simply go to the, the contact information on your screen. You'll know how to get your copy. God bless till we study his word together again.